Hugo Patel asks, what is the job industry like after undergrad in terms of pay compared to other fields? So according to Forbes, aerospace engineering actually cracks the top three in terms of highest paying engineering jobs here in the US. Number one is actually petroleum engineering. This involves extracting oil and gas from the ground and they make around 145,000 a year. Then we have the computer related engineering fields. So that's computer engineering, software engineering, data scientists. They make around 130,000 a year. And then we get to aerospace engineering. This could be flight engineers or system dynamic engineers, and they make around 123,000 in the US on average. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what engineering jobs within aerospace make the most money. Hi everyone, I'm KJ. Back in 2020, I graduated from MIT with a degree in aerospace engineering. Today, I'll be answering aerospace related questions in this episode of Life Support. Pilot Brandon asks, how did you choose a drone side of aeronautics versus planes or astronautics? So that's a great question. Aerospace is a fairly broad field, broader than people realize. And there's the drone aspect, so that's part of autonomous systems, maybe robotics. There's planes and the flight dynamics around those, and then space. So we have like CubeSats, we have rockets in general, we have just orbital mechanics, stuff like that. And honestly, I was just never really a giant rocket person or a plane person. I just really loved code and how code can influence broader systems. So I really gravitated towards the autonomous systems side of things and I thought I was going to do something in autonomous cars or autonomous drones. I did ultimately end up choosing the autonomous drone route because I felt like that was an industry that had the highest growth potential. Lalit M15 asks, is it better to work at a startup or a big firm in aerospace? So I'm a little biased here. I did work in both a startup and at a larger aerospace firm. I think the biggest difference that I see is pace and funding. So in terms of pace, the bigger firm is going to go a lot slower than a startup. They have to go through a lot of paperwork for each decision. And there's so many levels involved with pushing any idea forward versus a startup. You can really make those decisions on the fly and you can be more adaptive there. But on the flip side, there's the funding aspect and these larger aerospace firms really have almost unlimited funding from the government or from military contracts. So you have the capability to really try new things and push push the boundary a little bit more. With a startup, it's limited resources because you're only going to get those resources from investors and you have to show that you're doing well with those money. So that's the give and take between startups and big firms. Folk Pukufol asks, was it hard for you to get a job right out of MIT? So fortunately, because of my network and because of the exposure that I had with this YouTube channel, people had reached out to me. And so that's how I gained the opportunity to become one of the lead engineers for the autonomous drone startup. They actually reached out to me we had a chat over a brunch and I signed in a couple of days after that. So I think I'm in a bit of a different position than other people, but that's how I got my first job out of college. It was actually during my senior year and I started working there before I even graduated. Omul MK asks, any tips on how to get started early networking? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is just finding what you're passionate about, being well-versed in that area, and then show that you have the ability to talk to humans as humans. I think that's the biggest aspect. It doesn't even matter what profession, what career you're trying to do. If people like being around you, if they see the passion that you talk about any sort of topic, then they'll want you to work on similar projects that they know will interest you because they know that is the type of person that will be dedicated on the day to day and that will be able to push projects forward because of that passion. So yes, of course, reach out to as many people in your respective field as possible create those connections and have those conversations. But remember to be yourself and to be excited about what you're excited about and show that. Korede Oyafusi asks, what's the most challenging project you have ever worked on in aerospace engineering? So I will say that the most challenging project that I've worked on specifically was in that autonomous drone startup that I was talking about earlier. In that sort of setting, we were really having to innovate on the entire system. Like, yes, there were bits and pieces of other systems that we were using and we were building off of, but the entire package of drone connected to a network with different safety systems that have to follow the FAA regulations and then the vision landing system and other redundancies along the route planning, all of those things had to come together in a package. 
And what made it most difficult for me is that with the aspect of investors and the limited funds, we had to really show on the fly with live demos and really show the capabilities and not have any mistakes, really. Just New Hood asks, while pursuing aerospace engineering, will we be exposed to welding and stuff? So I wasn't personally exposed to welding during my aerospace engineering curriculum, but I do know a lot of other aerospace engineers who picked up welding on the side or had welding specific classes that they got to practice those skills on and work in the machine shops and such. So I really think that it depends on what university setting you're at and what sort of classes they have available and which ones you ultimately end up choosing. Maybe you have to do this in a more club setting and not directly in your curriculum, but I'm sure that there's places and ways to learn welding in or out of your aerospace engineering curriculum. Jose Ma 25 asks, my favorite part about it is all relationship with structures. What jobs can I have? Yeah, so structures is one of those areas in aerospace engineering that a lot of people don't fully talk about. I think structures is a part of a lot of different areas within aerospace. And if structures is specifically the thing that you want to work on, there's jobs like systems test dynamics engineer. I was able to intern at that role back in 2018 at Northrop Grumman, and it involved a bunch of vibration testing, acoustic testing to make sure that different structures and systems could fundamentally last the actual rocket launch into space. So there's that aspect of structure there's also stress testing and strain testing, various aspects like that. I feel like both a mechanical engineer and an aerospace engineer would be equipped to fill in those roles. So I'll round this answer out by saying the title of the role doesn't have to have structures in it specifically for you to have a structures oriented role. There's plenty of roles within aerospace that involve structures on a day-to-day -day basis that might not have it in the title. So just make sure to read the job descriptions there. Yasmin Kalij asks, what careers are available to those with a degree in aerospace engineering. So yes, aerospace engineering is a more versatile degree than people might expect depending on how deep you went into the coding aspect or the plane aspect or the space aspect, that really changes what I'd advise you to look for. I'd say that more generally, there are systems engineer roles that aerospace engineers do quite well in. Uh, there's also plane specific ones like flight engineer and then space specific ones like propulsion engineer. So it really depends on at what aspect of the system that you want to work on. Do you want to work at the broad system level? Do you want to work at the coding level, the chip level? So then at that point, you're looking at roles like robotics engineering or even computer engineering. It really depends on what your background is. But I think aerospace engineering is fairly versatile. It just depends on what areas you really focused on during your curriculum. So this next question asks, how can AI be used more efficiently for space exploration? Yeah, I know AI has been a buzzword right now and it's been applied to everything. But I do think space exploration is a cool place to apply AI. AI specifically can really just help with a lot of the busy work and a lot of the scanning through files or images images that people right now have had to do. So an AI model might be able to sift through a gigantic image and find a place where a potential star or planet could be, for example. And an AI model can even be used on a CubeSat that's sole purpose is to just scan the different areas of the Earth. And it can point out different abnormalities that previously someone else would have had to watch the feed come in and pause the video at some point, look around, see if there's anything wrong. An AI model will be able to point these things out almost instantaneously. So those are the types of areas that I think it'll really help the busy work, the scanning through files, scanning through images. Chill Egg asks, how is C++ used in aerospace? What other languages are used? So C++ is used for more autonomous systems. I really used it a lot when working on the autonomous drones because it's more of a real time language. It doesn't have any lag and you can take in the different inputs of the world and apply those. So autonomous cars, autonomous robots, autonomous drones. I wouldn't be surprised if C++ is the main language at any one company. Other languages I've seen used are Python, straight up C. And for older systems, it just really depends on when that system was developed. I've seen other older coding languages used. But I will say right now, it's a lot of C++ and it's even shifting a little bit into Python because that's getting more efficient. Anklebreaker23 asks, I'm a high school student and I'm looking for internships under professors. What would be the best way to do it? So I am someone who interned at an electrical engineering lab back in UCLA during my high school years. And that was a program that I had to just look up. There was different cohorts and a whole application process. And I applied to that one and fortunately got in. And that enabled me to go to that lab and not have to pay anything out of pocket. So 
to answer your question, I would first advise you to look at broader programs that have cohorts of interns that will allow you to intern on campus in a lab without having to pay for housing or food costs involved. Another option is cold emailing professors. This one really is a hit or miss because professors are really busy and they do have big inboxes, but I'd say utilize your network. If you know someone, say at UCLA, maybe have them email a different professor asking if they have any internship opportunities for high school students and so on and so forth. Daniel W asks, what are some things I should do to be ready before starting my aerospace engineering degree? Before starting a degree program at a university, I don't think there's anything that you really need to do to get ready. If you want to just feel a little bit more comfortable in your curriculum, then I'd recommend studying things like calculus, brushing up on physics, and really gaining a better understanding of chemistry. I think those three things will set you up pretty well for an aerospace engineering degree curriculum. Nath Silence asks, what are the challenges an individual can encounter in startup drone design and manufacturing? So yeah, this is a juicy one. I was one of the lead engineers for an autonomous drone company and really the biggest challenges that we had to face, it was also during COVID, so there were supply chain shortages and stuff like that, were around the regulations. Right now, the FAA treats drones similarly to how they treat a commercial jet, even if the size difference is incredible. Like they're not on the same scale, but so far the FAA is still almost treating them the same. So there's a lot of safety aspects that go into play, a lot of certification processes. So in the US specifically, it's really tough to get something like autonomous drones off the ground. And that's why companies like Amazon are still working on getting their <laughs> things moving and off the ground, no pun intended. Kenansato13 asks, what are pocket cubes? So pocket cubes, I put in the realm of CubeSats. So they're little satellites. We call them CubeSats because they're little cubes and they can be added to larger rocket launches to get something into space. They usually have fairly limited tasks that they have to do and they're mostly used for research purposes. So one pocket cube could have a camera on it and its sole purpose is to just go in orbit around the earth, look at the earth and see if there are any abnormalities that they can spot or any new interesting images that they can see. There might be another one that uses cameras to look out into space and to see if we can get any sort of glimpse of anything, maybe space debris or something like that. They're just tiny little missions, mostly used in research purposes at universities at this point, but they are cool to work on if you have the access to work on one of these. Narayani Nikam 0920 asks, is it worth switching from aerospace to software engineering? So if you didn't know, I did switch from aerospace engineering to software engineering a couple years ago after the autonomous drone startup, I went purely software. For me, it was really the bottlenecks that hardware brings to innovation. You can have the best algorithm, have the best idea, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to wait on things like regulations, things like hardware coming in, maybe manufacturing, and those specific aspects really pushed me in the software engineering direction. I've also lived in the code either way, whether it's applied to physical systems or cloud distributed systems. So it was an easy transition for me. But if you were someone that really loves working with planes or really loves working with propulsion systems, for example, I don't think you would enjoy a purely software engineering job. So it really depends uh, from person to person. Thumbly asks, what field of aerospace can the most money be made? So for this question, I'll give you the top three highest paying positions within the US that are aerospace related. I'm going to give the middle 50th percentile salary range according to ZipRecruiter. So at three, there's aircraft design engineer with a typical salary range of 139,000 to 167,000. At two, there's aeronautical engineer with a typical salary range of 89,000 to $172,000 a year. And that leaves us the highest paying aerospace engineering role, which is thermal dynamics engineer. This job typically involves research with different materials and reactions as well as computer simulations. And this salary range is between $117,000 and $225,000 a year. So that's all the questions I'm going to answer today. If you want to be a part of a future video, make sure to follow me on Instagram and look out for stories where I ask you to ask me questions about any sort of topic. And then you might see your question answered in a future video. As always, stay inspired, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one.